Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and in this video I explore what would happen if we put the Raptor 9 slash Unix boosters in place of the shuttle SRBs on the shuttle stack and see what kind of payload we can lift. So... yeah, well, okay, I'll the, cue all the abomination comments. But here we are. We are going to try to reserve fuel in the boosters so that they can be recovered. So I'm reserving the usual 20 seconds, which should be enough to bring them back to Cape Canaveral. And uh, we have in the bay a 50 ton payload. Now the shuttle capacity was 25 to 28 tons, depending on which version of the external tank. And of course, later in the program, they were mostly launching to the ISS, so they didn't carry nearly that much to that inclination. Uh, 50 tons seems to be quite high, but take a look at the vessel mass, 2,800 tons, compared to normal shuttle stacks, 2,030 tons. So we've got basically an extra 700 tons of tankage, and we have more efficient boosters because we're using methane and oxygen boosters instead of solid boosters so we should have way more capacity and my initial estimate is going to be 50 tons and we'll see how it goes it's tough to calculate without actually launching it because once again we have the situation where we're reserving fuel we have the situation where we're firing all the engines on the surface but there's a staging going on so it's a one and a half stage sort of deal and uh, there is the additional complication that we have to complete orbit with the OMS engines, but now carrying a 50-ton payload in the bay, the OMS engines don't have as much delta V. So are we going to have enough to come back, uh, right? I mean, you can't just put a huge payload in the bay of the shuttle, you know, dump 100 tons in there, and expect everything to work out perfectly because it doesn't have that much OMS, uh, the much delta V once it gets to low Earth orbit. It has less than 400 meters per second. So we have to be aware of that. There's the whole separation of the boosters from the stack, make sure that they don't collide with the wings. And yeah, I've cooked up a variant of my KOS script to deal with this, but I haven't confirmed that it works yet. So we're going to see what kind of disasters may occur. Uh, hopefully nothing too, too tragic. We'll see. Anyway, here we go. Okay, seems to be just uh, dawn here on the launch pad. We have the interesting situation. These boosters are obviously much larger, both in diameter and in length, than the normal shuttle SRBs, and we might want to explore smaller methane oxygen boosters, which I guess would be the Blue Origin New Glenn first stage, but we'll do this first. And our fins are sort of buried into the slots, and uh, yeah, they're not really, things aren't really fitting, but I don't think this platform has a collider on it. This is what I'm worried about. I'm thinking, ooh, what if things are going to collide on launch, right? Also, I noticed that the shuttle launch clamps, the, the clamps on the on the boosters are sort of tilting like this in a weird way. I sort of wonder why they do that, first of all, instead of like attaching to this part here. But yeah, they're going diagonal. The things you notice that make you worry. Anyway, let me copy the launch script. Somebody had asked how I put the make sure it loads the launch scripts. So I just go to the KOS, go to the control unit I want. I started on archive, that's a difficulty setting thing. And I go edit shuttle raptor or whatever you want to call it. Oh, raptor. I've got the atmospheric autopilot installed, so I have to make sure it stays disabled. Control A, control V to copy it in. I have it just in a text file. I know they're more complicated or or simpler ways of doing this, but this is the way I do it. So I want to make sure that the atmospheric op pilot is disabled and run. We're not go loud. We are not going to the ISS orbit. We are just going to regular lower orbit straight out from Cape Canaveral. Okay. Well, the first obstacle seems to be 
Good. <laughs> we do not have that problem. Oh, uh, the grid fins seem to be sticking out. That was not according to plan. Let's not do that. I don't know if there's an... A uh, maybe I should action group them and make sure they don't do that. I already had a script in there for this shuttle raptor, but that had some issues on reflection. So, in theory, at 2 minutes and 30 seconds, it'll shut off all the engines on the boosters and separate them. And that'll be reserving 20 seconds of stage time. Uh, uh, looking at it, maybe I'll have to check that out. Maybe that timing is a little bit wrong. It depends on... Because it's going to throttle down the boosters as we pass through Max-Q, just like the shuttle normally does. So the burn time is a little bit uncertain on the boosters right now, because we are going to be throttling down for a bit. Nope, we are past the clouds. Uh, mild throttling, because of course, in this case, every engine throttles, so we don't need to throttle too deeply. Given the timing now, I think we might be reserving more than I wanted to. Okay, here we go. Okay, I cut them off. They're separating. Oh, 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 I heard bullet explosions. Oh, no. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um. Oh, it took out the control surfaces back here. Oh, shucks. Okay. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's redo this. Yeah, uh, so... Hmm, yes, it, it always takes a little bit of finagling on the separation motors when it comes to the SRVs, or in this case, those boosters. Clearly, this was not good enough. Alright, we'll work on that. But also, uh, we could probably wait a few more seconds. It was more than 20 seconds worth. So, okay. Revert. Okay, I think I've fixed the grid fin activation and also I've moved to the location of the separatrons a bit. But no guarantee that that's going to work properly. We'll find out. Now, if it doesn't take out our elevons, then maybe I'll try a return to launch site abort. Uh, though the problem is the launch script will shut down the main engines and we can't restart them. I need to, it's, it's tough to tell the launch script to start the RTLS abort uh, along the way. That's, that's an interesting thing that we might have to try and figure out how to do at some point. But right now, that's not something that it does. So it'll try and shut down the engines and that's not what we want to have happen. So initiating an RTLS abort is a little bit complicated is the point. off we go again. Yep, just realized that uh, it had not been capturing my cursor because I had that turned off for the mission profile videos. Sorry about that. Now I have the cursor back. Oh, we have thralled back up and we continue. Of course, we know where the moment of suspense is at this point. Booster separation. Okay, I gave it four more seconds. That should bring us to a uh, stage time of 20 seconds left. There we go. Separation. Uh, they seem to be clear. They seem to be clear. We did not have any explosions this time. All right, we continue. Still 50 tons in the bay. We'll see whether it gets there. It seems like we have some extra margin, but then, again, there's also whether we end up in the correct orbit uh, for the external tank to be disposed of, and then how much we have left in the OMS system. Expanding the OMS system is another topic. Well, overall, we're looking good for a okay orbit. We're getting close. We'll see how it goes. The shuttle's balance is also a consideration as we've got more weight back here now. 
and the engines aren't necessarily if the weight pulls the center of mass too far this way the engines don't necessarily point through it it looks like we're okay though uh, a whole 600 meters per second left in the external tank however ooh let's not talk about that bit <laughs> um, uh, the external tank oh it's already oh I guess we aren't too far away from apoapsis hmm we might have to adjust the script a little to leave some more time to apoapsis Okay, there we go. I was wondering whether it was going to ignite those or not. Alright, we are going. You can see 300 meters per second now in the OMS system. So, it's looking like we could carry more than this 50 tons as far as the external tank fuel is concerned. But... Well, I mean, we'll see after we complete orbit here. But the OMS system might be hard pressed. That depends on what kind of orbit we want to place this sort of thing in. Alright, we have a shutdown, program ended, 242 by 224, let's call it. And 250 meters per second left with the payload in, but let's say we decoupled payload. We're at 136.5 tons, we decouple. That's not as heavy as I thought. Uh, wait, no, that's right, that's right, okay. Brief math failure there. Uh, okay, so let's move out. So after we let go of the payload, we've got 400 meters per second. So that's not too bad. Let's try and push it a little bit more. Uh, let's put a, something a little bit heavier inside. Maybe adjust the script a little bit so that we have a little bit more time to apoapsis before uh, when we uh, end the external tank stage. Okay, so taking a look at we had about 600 meters per second left in the external tank, so I'm just going to go ahead and see where we lose about 600 meters per second of delta V. Of course, it's a little bit more complicated than that because we're diminishing our sea level thrust to weight ratio, so that also hurts. 70 tons? That's a lot. Let's try 70 tons though. 70 tons there. That would be impressive. There's a whole other topic about whether the shuttle's bay was constructed to handle having 70 tons inside of it, and whether it would need to be heavier in that case. So that's a whole other business. Okay, here we go. <laughs> 70 tons. All right, booster set. All nice and good. Just gotta take a quick look at them. Uh, 3,841 meters per second. I'm pretty sure that's enough to return. I mean, they are going pretty fast though. I mean, 2,000 meters per second. 2,350 meters per second they're going at, but some of that is vertical speed. Okay, we'll, we're in the final phase of ascent here as it's trying to manage our orbit looks like it'll be pretty close this time so 70 tons is probably about right okay looks good 54 kilometer periapsis we're still probably going to phase through the external tank. I need to put separatrons on the external tank. In older versions, I had separatrons on the external tank, but then people said, well, the external tank doesn't have separatrons, so I decided to leave them off of this in 1.8.1, but maybe we'll just have separatrons anyway. The problem is we don't do the RCS avoidance maneuver that the shuttle does, could probably tell the KOS script to do that, but you know, it has to know how much to do and to make sure it doesn't flip around randomly. Okay, we have ignition of the OMS engines, 260 meters per second it reads here now. 
for return, I would like 200 meters per second just for my own purposes. The real shuttle could get by with less, but... But that's 200 meters per second without the payload in the bay, of course. All right, 242 by 206. And we've got 216 meters per second left, so that's pretty good still. And we see that we are 20 tons more than we were last time. So as we decouple here, it is in fact 70 tons that we've brought up. And this way. And 400 meters per second left with the OMS. And again, if we had to put this into a different orbit than we currently have, that would be a little bit more difficult. But yeah, it's interesting. We could certainly bring up a pretty nice fuel depot like this. I mean, not a Hydrolox fuel depot because that doesn't have the density. I mean, we could certainly bring up something that would fill the cargo bay, but that probably wouldn't be 70 tons. But yeah, interesting possibilities. But now there are a few other questions. Of course, what about doing the New Glenn boosters, New Glenn first stage boosters? instead of the Raptor boosters, because let's face it, the Raptor boosters seem to be a little bit OP. <laughs> um, maybe we need a smaller option. And also, I mean, technically the New Glenn boosters have more thrust, but they don't have the efficiency. And I forget exactly what the total mass is in that case. We'll have to take a look. So there's that. Uh, the new Glenn boosters do have the benefit of being something that's actually going to be made, whereas my hypothetical Raptor 9 boosters are hypothetical, and they are not something that SpaceX actually has planned. There are many, many things that come to mind at this point, but we will wait for next time. Make your, make your guesses as to what the new Glenn boosters would be able to do as far as payload capacity. I'm pretty satisfied with 70 tons in this case. So, yeah, we will see if I decide to do anything with this. It might be interesting. Uh, this certainly opens up further uses of the shuttle that we did not have before. But then, will it really be nice to launch the shuttle without the SRBs? What do you think about that? I mean, maybe we should stick to the, the, the traditional stack. But maybe just slapping on the Rapid 9 boosters is a good idea. I'm of two minds about that. So anyway, with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.